So Samsung's Galaxy S21 was the very first flagship smartphone launch of 2021 and yeah it was rather underwhelming serving up yet another lacklustre Exynos chipset and specs that were barely better than last year's S20 Fan Edition. And the S21 ain't exactly cheap either so it's kind of like spunking up a whole load of cash for a shiny new Porsche and then discovering that the sods have gone and shoved a Ford Fiesta's engine under the hood. But if you are basically holding out for a proper beefcake well Xiaomi is here to sort you right out with its fresh new Mi 11 flagship. This shiny massive slab does not bugger about. You've got that super fast Snapdragon 888 platform, you've got a Quad HD plus 120Hz display, a 108 megapixel camera and lots of other premium tech that makes my crotchal region all tingly. And best of all, around these parts the Mi 11 will cost you just €749, Euros, which is cheaper even than the bog standard Galaxy S21, although admittedly it is considerably more expensive than the Mi 11 will cost you in its home country. Anyway, I've had my SIM rammed inside of this absolute unit for the last week or so using it as my full-time smartphone. So here's my in-depth Xiaomi Mi 11 smartphone review and for more on the latest greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now first up, yeah the Xiaomi Mi 11 could be politely and accurately described as a massive c Although thankfully it's not quite as ridiculously huge as last year's Mi 10T Pro which practically gave me a hernia every time I lifted the bloody thing up. Of course at 6.81 inches the Mi 11 is still an absolute pain in the arse to use one handed but at least at 196 grams it's not an absolute brick as well. Those shiny glass surfaces are certainly slippery but I like the frosted finish around back especially in this bright and breezy horizon blue model. It's a subtle gradient design that's eye strokingly satisfying especially combined with the usual gentle curvature. And yeah the Mi 11 may look all pretty like but it's also tougher than a bit of petrol station beef jerky. You've got Gorilla Glass Victus plating that front end and that's basically drop as well as scratch resistant. You've even got a pre-installed screen protector on there to keep it looking extra shiny and fresh. Xiaomi specs were a bit more vague about the arse end of this smartphone. I'm not sure if that's Gorilla Glass Victus as well but certainly either way the last week or so I've been treating this thing with very little respect indeed banging it about the place and so far not a single scratch, scuff or chip in sight. However it's not all good news because there's no official IP rating for this big boy so the Mi 11 doesn't mind getting moist after all who doesn't so it's absolutely fine in a bit of rain, bit of snow as we've been having lately uh, with small spillages but I certainly do not have the cojones to actually dump this thing into a bath or a sink or anything. Let's move on from the looks and Android 11 is expanded and in some ways enhanced here by MIUI 12, Xiaomi's very own launcher which these days has a much more stock Android vibe while still adding a shag load of extra features. Now as I always admit I certainly was not really much of a fan of MIUI at all until the more recent versions where most of the stuff that I used to moan about like the complete lack of an app store have been sorted out. And I know that people like to throw complaints at MIUI like oh it's just full of adverts and stuff I didn't see a single advert the entire time I was using the Mi 11 as my full time smartphone. You've got loads of great features packed in there like a customizable always on display, you've got a sexy bit of edge lighting for your notification shenanigans and some dependable face unlock support to back up the optical in display fingerprint sensor. Both of those worked absolutely beautifully this past week. And I absolutely adore the fact that in the UI you can hibernate the phone while you're watching a YouTube video, a bit of Netflix or anything as well. It's particularly handy here in YouTube if you're listening to an audio book or a podcast or something and you want to be out and about not actually staring at the screen. And of course you've got the likes of Game Turbo as well which allows you to block notifications and pesky shit like that while you're busy playing games which is an absolute lifesaver on the likes of Call of Duty, PUBG, stuff like that. And thankfully all the good Android stuff is still in there. You've got the likes of the dark mode, those parental controls, well-being tools, yada yada yada. The fingerprint sensor will also apparently be able to take your pulse at some point after an over-the-air update. It's not quite as convenient as having a smartwatch but it's a nice addition all the same. One of the only proper annoying quirks that I noticed on the Mi 11 while I was using it as my phone this week was the fact that notifications sometimes take a little while to trickle through which is particularly annoying if you use the likes of WhatsApp stuff like that for work uh, so a couple of times I you know I got a message come through but I didn't actually get a notification about it for an hour two hours after it actually arrives so that means you've got to constantly open up the apps just to make sure there's definitely nothing waiting for you. Hopefully that's just some stupid annoying quirky little bug that's going to get squashed pretty damn pronto because that is it is very annoying like I'm talking face turning beetroot red temple throbbing cursing every and the Mi 11 is a dual SIM smartphone, both of those SIM uh, slots support 5G simultaneously as well which is great news. No micro SD support however just like that Galaxy S21 to expand the 128 gigs or 256 gigs of onboard storage. So that is kind of a shame especially if you don't really make the most of cloud storage 
or any of that good stuff. But at least it's UFS 3.1 as you kind of expect from a flagship smartphone, so super nippy. I noticed when I was grabbing apps, they would literally download and install in about two or three seconds, which was fantastic. And one of the other highlights of the Mi 11 is that effing massive 6.81 inch AMOLED screen. Definitely a sound way to absorb far too much Netflix on those days where you really can't be bothered to crawl out from under the duvet. The Quad HD resolution and HDR 10 Plus support combine to produce very slick visuals indeed. That HDR is supported in Netflix as well. Although I personally prefer the warmer tones from Samsung's dynamic AMOLED panels. And you've also got some video tools built into MIUI which can be toggled on or off actually while you're watching uh, the videos as well using that little drag out toolbar I showed you earlier and that's quite handy for some really low res content that you'll find on the likes of YouTube we're talking like sub 720p stuff can help to sharpen them up a little bit add a bit of clarity with some stronger contrast some of the tools work better than others some of them they don't really seem to do too much but they're nice to have and you can expect the Mi 11 to pump out natural looking colors too with a just noticeable color difference rating of 0.38 where the lower the number the better the performance but you can also make those visuals pop if you prefer by piddling about in the display settings and that's also where you can turn on the 120 hertz mode for a gorgeously smooth experience and that 120 hertz mode works on the maximum resolution quad hd as well just like the samsung galaxy s21 ultra samsung finally managed to sort that one out as for the brightness as well no troubles there bump of the mi 11 all the way up to that maximum setting and it's positively icy and quite comfortably hitting that 1000 nit sort of mark although the auto brightness was a little bit shonky at times i gotta say sometimes in the evenings it was just dialed down a little bit too low so i had to manually bump it up a bit. And the Mi 11 does also sport one of those screens that just tilts and curves neatly over the edge, which means that occasionally when I found I was gripping the Mi 11 rather tightly, my palms did intrude on that screen and accidentally press stuff. As I say, it mostly happened when I was squeezing the Mi 11 rather tight, generally when I was trying to use it one-handed, because it is slightly terrifying using this thing with just the one mitt, because it is so slippery. So yeah, anyone looking for a smartphone that's easy to use one-handed, I'd steer clear of the Mi 11. You got a stereo speaker set up here which pumps out decent audio when needed but I usually have my Bluetooth headphones hooked up and with the audio stream in that Mi 11 once again excels. This behemoth is high res audio certified plus you've got LDAC support for your decent headphones so music sounds ruddy lovely. But unfortunately there is absolutely no headphone jack anywhere to be found on the Mi 11, gosh darn it. Slightly annoying when all of uh, Xiaomi's budget phones have one, but hey ho. But one area where I certainly have bugger all complaints is the performance, because Xiaomi has slapped the Snapdragon 888 into this bad boy right here, backed by 8 gigs of RAM. There's no 12 gig uh, version here in the UK and Europe in general, at least not just yet. But at least it's DDR5 RAM, and I certainly did not have any troubles when it came to everyday running or whatever I threw at this thing basically it was all good that adreno 660 gpu for instance can definitely handle any kind of game out there so gamers will be gushing with joy even genshin impact on the highest detail settings was impressively smooth with only the very occasional teeny little judder when things got a wee bit mental Online games like Call of Duty also run perfectly with the 480Hz touch sampling rate meaning that you've got that competitive edge. Or at least people who are good at games will have a competitive edge. I was just slightly less shit, I guess. Except when these sneaky little bastards. Ah! The Mi 11 did get rather warm in spots when I was gaming for a while so certainly I would not want to charge and play at the same time but otherwise the Mi 11's cooling system seems to cope just fine. And of course you've got that full 5G support thanks to Qualcomm's X60 modem which is integrated into the 888 but unfortunately as I'm trapped in a completely 5G-less area at the moment in a lockdown special I had absolutely bugger all chance of testing that out so apologies for that. At some point when it's not illegal for me to do so I will uh, head out into central London and I'll do a full-on 5G test with all of the flagships to see how those speeds stack up. And of course you've got full Wi-Fi 6 support on here as you would expect from a flagship blower so again if you've upgraded your router at home then you can expect super nippy connections. Now the 4600 milliamp battery isn't as big as some rivals but it still proved more than enough for all of my needs here on the Mi 11. Even with all of the most power sapping features active here on the Xiaomi Mi 11 I'm talking the always on display, the 120Hz mode, Quad HD, the video upscale and all of that good stuff I still found that I finished most days with around 20 to 25 percent of that battery remain and that's generally with around five to six hours of screen on time. The only time I actually ran it almost down to empty was when I did quite a lot of Skyping and quite a lot of camera stuff. And when you do drain the Mi 11 completely, well, no worries at all. You've got 55 watt wired charging support and 50 watt 
wireless charging support as well if you've got a super beefy hardcore wireless charging pad at home. And either way, it's going to be filled up again from empty in a, less than an hour. Now before I go sink a bottle of single malt and indulge in my hobby of badger meddling, let's have a squint at that camera tech, starting with the 108 megapixel primary shooter, using one of Samsung's HMX sensors with built-in OIS. You can shoot in the maximum 108 megapixel resolution if you like, but this only slightly sharpens up your photo at the sacrifice of colour accuracy. So I'd just stick with the auto mode, which still captures a seriously detailed photo when conditions are good. The Mi 11 can slightly oversaturate an image in strong contrast, although usually it handles iffy conditions just fine. Where this phone really impresses is capturing other human beings, even small jittery ones off their tits on Haribo. In particular, the Mi 11 does a sterling job with portrait shots. You get clean edge capture and a wonderful bokeh style blur, which you can actually alter after you've taken each photo if you want to strengthen or weaken the effect. Night shots are another strength and one area where the Mi 11 beats other rivals like the Galaxy S21. That autofocus works well even in very low light and on auto mode you'll get bright snaps albeit with a healthy helping of grain. And this can be dealt with though by switching to night mode which delivers sharper photos with realistic tones. As for the other lenses you've got a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter that does a respectable enough job when called upon. And for extreme close ups the Mi 11 has a secret weapon in its super macro mode using the special 5 megapixel tele macro lens. However I did still find that this often produced blurry results even with the autofocus unless you're really still and super careful. So basically try using it after 4 pints of best and you're buggered. And when it comes to zoom shots, the Mi 11 is about as helpful as a condom machine in a nunnery. I struggled to get the lens to focus on anything when I was zooming in and the results were generally blurry or fuzzy or crap. Still, anyone who loves recording their existence can do so in glorious 4K resolution with HDR10 Plus support, although once again the contrast isn't quite as good as I've seen elsewhere. Still, I definitely approve of the object tracking feature which can help keep the focus locked on your sprog and crop in when needed. And if you want to, you can bump up the resolution to 8K for sharper detail. I personally prefer the 4K 60fps option which produce crisp, smooth results with clear audio pickup to boot. And then last up, there's a 20 megapixel selfie snapper which is absolutely fine and dandy for those vanity shots, especially as your wrinkles and sags are smoothed over by default. Now portrait mode is wonderful as always, and even in low light you once again get quite sharp results. Nice one. And if you want to, you can shoot a full HD video at 30 or 60 frames per second, or you can keep it at that 30 FPS level and shoot it with a good bit of HDR action if you want to stand around in the snow. So there is my full in-depth Xiaomi Mi 11 flagship smartphone review. And I've got to say, for that kind of money, you definitely get more bang for your buck compared with the likes of Samsung's Galaxy S21. Of course, there are a couple of little quirks in there, such as the fact that those notifications never seem to actually pop through, something which will hopefully be sorted out in an OTA update very shortly indeed. But you know, the performance is absolutely shit hot. The battery life was solid enough. The camera was pretty dependable across a range of conditions. And overall, yeah, it's a good... A, a f***ing good f***. Sorry, my brain just absolutely turned to jelly for a second there. Uh, yeah, it's good. So that's what I think, but it'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. I have done a full side-by-side -side comparison of this with the Galaxy S21. If you are intrigued to see exactly how they stack up against one another for the performance, the battery life, everything else. So check that out. That should be going live tomorrow. Stay tuned for lots more hot coverage on the sexiest tech of 2021. If you haven't done already, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a lovely rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.